everybody, welcome back to Pixie Woo. Um, <clears throat> why is the light a bit weird on that? Let me just check. What's going on with my crazy barnet? Let's sort that out before I start. Hello everybody, welcome back to Pixie Woo. I've just got back from my holiday with my family and it was lovely. So nice, I'm in a really good mood. My hair looks crazy, but hey ho, it always does. Um, today's video I'm going to do for you is of like a blast from the past. Basically, I am going stepping back 12, 13 years to the makeup that I wore for my first ever interview with MAC and my first day at MAC. I wore the same makeup. I obviously love this look like crazy. And I have tried to find products the same because they don't all exist anymore. And um, I'm gonna recreate that look and I'm going back in time. So um, let me get started. Right, firstly, the foundation I wore. I've been to MAC and I've purchased loads of stuff. I had to have two bags full. I've got lots of stuff to do this look. Let me see. They didn't have a lot of the stuff I used to wear. But um, we can get the gist of the idea of how awful the makeup was I wore. But I got a job there, so it can't have been that bad. I have to be quite quick with this look, actually, because um, I've got to pick my son up from, from a birthday party in a minute. Right, so I was 23 when I started at MAC. And I had already done a two-year diploma at college on media makeup. Then I went on to Estee Lauder and became the counter manager in a boot store to progress because I knew there was a Mac coming to Norwich and I wanted to work at Mac so much. Um, so I did, I think, a couple of years at um, Estee Lauder, learning the trade, same company, so I knew it would go there. And then um, when Mac opened, I went for a job interview there and I got supervisor. No, I got assistant manager, got assistant manager. So um, let me show you the makeup that I wore for that. First of all, I wore Studio Tech foundation. Now I love this foundation and I still do. And I wore it with a little bit of Fix Plus spritzed onto the skin. Now this makeup actually sold quite well when I had it on. I don't know why anyone would want to look like it, but well, who knows? I might fall in love with it again. Right, so a little bit of Fix Plus. I actually used a flat foundation brush, the 109, I think it was. Um, but we've come a long way with the brushes, so I'm not going back in time to use that brush as well. So just bath this foundation over my skin. I had a lot younger skin then. This is NW25. But I always thought this foundation sat really beautifully on my skin because I have a um, dry normal skin. I don't have pores really. I have um, quite a dry skin, but makeup sits well on it. It's not flaky, it's just dry. I still very much love this foundation. They'll probably discontinue it along with all the other stuff that I wore back then. But things move on, don't they? Then onto the eyes, and I actually used um, aquadisiac, which they don't do anymore. Why would they discontinue such a great colour? Who knows? And also um, a little bit of steamy, which is this one here. Or is it, is it steamy frost? Or actually, I think it was called teal blue back then. Can't really remember exactly, but that over my eyes. So let's start off with the aquadisiac first. Now, guys, anyone... So I started MAC when I was 23, just about to turn 24. Um, if anyone, this is 2005, so if anyone was a MAC artist back then, you will remember, it was the good days. I don't really know what the days are like now at MAC. I've got a bit of fluff hanging off this. Don't really know what the days are like now at MAC, but they were great fun days. We could wear what we want, we could be, hmm, we were hungover, we probably couldn't have been hungover, we were very hungover a lot of the time. I had such a great group of girls that I worked with. I don't think we had any guys in the Mac in Norwich. Then I moved to the London store and we had some great guys and girls and all we did was go to the pub. We all went to the White Horse every night after work. But uh, yeah, I just went into Mac and I was trying to find stuff that I used to wear and so much of it has been discontinued. Why would they discontinue Belightful? It's like literally the best highlighter. None of the others, none of these new mineral skin finishes stand the test of time. Belightful was the best. Wasn't great for darker skin, I have to say. There wasn't many highlighters then. Now they do a lot more. I always had to use Style Blusher 
as a highlighter on darker skin. It's come a long way at least with that. So aquadisiac, what a colour, hey? can hear you're all so jealous. I'm going to put a little bit of steamy. I just pop that. This was one of my palettes from when I worked at Max. You can see the colours that I liked. And um, these aquadisiac and steamy have got holes in. That's how much I love them. It's not even over there yet. You wait. There is so much more fun to be had. Then I used to take MAC Minted Pencil. And I would run that along the top waterline. And no, no top lash line. Now guys, if you, if you have a favourite colour that you used to wear all the time at MAC, it's been discontinued. Let us know what it was. Put it in the comments below because I want to know. Because you forget all these amazing colours that used to be there, like Ocar and stuff like that. The colours that they used to create, that they just stopped. And you're like, no! So I then put a little bit of minted. But I'd take that inside the eye, so it was all over green, inside the waterline, both top and bottom. I'm not finished there with the green, guys, with the green love. I then took this, which they now discontinued. This is called So There Jade, which is a um, PowerPoint eye pencil. Ooh, dropped it. PowerPoint eye pencil, and it's a little bit lighter, and I would run that over the top, so it gave it this kind of lighter, shimmery finish really necessary but I did it underneath as well mustn't forget the underneath you would think that I would finish with the green there but I don't I then had a green mascara and it was called Boston Fern they don't do it anymore but I have found a green that is um, a Marc Jacob one which is similar so I would then pop Tons of mascara on in Boston Fern. Back then as well, you used to have, every um, single employee would get a product manual. It was like your Mac Bible. And you had to learn all the products, all the ingredients that were in the products. So like we had a um, rapid eye, fast eye response, I think it was called. And when you did your makeup certification to be able to do makeovers, which I don't even know if they still do anymore, you used to get really highly certified and they used to send a trainer down and they'd test you on um, how much knowledge you had and how well, how whether you could produce the makeup in 35 minutes and do a face chart and talk them through the products and the knowledge that you had. So you had to, you know, like fast eye response, you'd say, oh, I'm just putting this under your eyes. It's got caffeine in, so it helps to stimulate the blood under the eyes and help it move a little bit better. It's also got chamomile in, so it relaxes the eye and is soothing. And we had to know all the ingredients back then to everything. I think that's why MAC was so sought after. It was literally the only place where you got actual makeup artists doing your makeup and they actually had amazing knowledge but we had to we all got issued one of these booklets those were the days green mascara i'm going to send this to my girls in a bit to show them i must have a photo of this somewhere i'll have to dig it out i also had to get this now this is mac i've never been good at fragrance never ever ever and this one, they've changed the bottle slightly, is called Turquatic. And this would always remind me of MAC. It's um, like a fresh, weird smell. But all it reminds me of is farts. Because I worked with one girl that had terrible wind. And every time she would break wind, people would spray this like, Oh, go away. I'm not going to disclose her name because it's really unfair to do that. But they all spray. And now this reminds me of farts. The end. Okay, let's have a look at where I am with this makeup. I had a couple of concealers I loved when I was at MAC and then it went on to MAC Moisture Cover, which I also love. But I started off with Select Cover Up. I love this one and I still do for blemishes because it goes on as a liquid and then it sets as a matte, which I really, really like, especially if you have a little stubborn blemish, which I have here, you can push it in and it seals. And also this one, because when you've had, this is um, uh, Studio Finish Concealer, when you've had a heavy night, this conceals everything. It does have a flashback, so you have to be careful though. I'm going to use 
Studio Finish Concealer. I've got a couple of blemishes, let's cover them. Nothing is getting through this bad boy. This is the Concealer of Champions. Who knows what film that line is from. Take out the concealer and replace it with something else. Okay, onto bronzer. Now I had two bronzers that I used, MAC Golden Bronzer and MAC Matte Bronzer. Now, if you remember matte bronzer, it couldn't, I think they still do it, I'm not sure, but it couldn't, um, I'm gonna use golden first while I chat. It didn't blend over any makeup when it hadn't been powdered. In fact, it sometimes didn't blend over when it had been powdered. It was so matte that it just stuck to the skin and you'd get like lines where it was. So I used to use my golden bronzer first to create a bit of shape and whatnot. And then I would use my matte bronzer as a more of a contour. Because contour products weren't so much about then. Even though we did it, it was hard to get the contour products. So I'm going to take my matte bronze now. I wish I still had my MAC Bible. It was so epic. I used to swap between two different blushes. I would either use Peaches or Pink Swoon. And sometimes I'd use Frankly Scarlet as well. So I'm going to take a little bit of Peaches onto the apples of my cheeks. And pull up. I'd wear it quite high up. It's taking me back. It's taking me back. And then I would wear a good bit of Belightful, which was the best. And I still do have one at home, but I forgot to bring it in this morning. But instead, I've got a little bit of vanilla pigment, because if in doubt, grab some vanilla. Because it was, we didn't have the luxury of quite so many highlighters then. So my vanilla pigment would go through my brow bone. Look at that shimmer. It's got a lovely yellow undertone to it. Down my nose. And my cupid's bow. Touch of vanilla just in that inner corner there. Can be quite strong. I wasn't shy about it showing that I had makeup on. I wanted people to see my makeup because that's how I would hit target on the top of the cheekbone because I haven't got the light for and this was the other thing that would work if not a real high shine of there was delightful and there was silver dusk back then. Silver dusk I didn't love so much. But Belightful was amazing. Then, you would think that that's the end of the colour on my face, but no, 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 no. Way more to come. Um, on my lips, I would have a little bit of Sublime Culture. They've discontinued it, but they do have Subculture. There was absolutely no point of me doing this part of the lip, just so you know. I did it anyway. Then, I would take a little bit of Snob Lipstick. You'd think that was enough. Not for me. I'd then get a, um, it was a bit lighter than this. It was a lip lacquer called Pinker Dot. Um, this one's Saint Germain, and it's the most similar one I can find, but nothing can replace Pinker Dot. It was possibly the worst color ever. It was like this, but more lilac. And I would cover so that it was literally glooping my lips. Again, I sold a lot of it. So there you have the finished, my first day um, as a makeup artist makeup look at MAC. Um, it's so funny and I'm so sorry if I sold you, lots of you, this look. Actually, I kind of like it. I love it because it has memories for me. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, follow me on Instagram. My name is now Pixie Woo which is very exciting, um, and share your stories of MAC if you work there or any other stores if you work there because they're always so funny and there'll be a lot of people that have been in the same environment, um, especially if you were part of theme days because theme days, I don't know if they still are, they used to be a massive thing and you had to, there was a 
theme specialist and they'd have to create the whole theme of the day and you'd all have to dress up. It was so awful and so embarrassing, but I look back and I really, really laugh at those events now. Um, if you have any products that you wish that they still did, like I have so many, then share because I often forget and I really want to know um, what other people think. God, why did they discontinue that? There's so many amazing products that they stopped, um, which is a shame. So don't forget to like and share and I'll see you next time. Take care.